Here you go. Okay, well, thanks for coming out, guys. Um, this is our green manure crop for the year. We did a 10 species mix. A um, couple things we changed from last year is we did plant a little bit later. Um, the main reason for that is we had some buckwheat in our mix last year, and it started to flower and go to seed. We didn't want it to go to full maturity, so we incorporated the crop. But we ended up doing that before we were done killing potatoes. So we had the swarm of insects that were in the green manure crop go over to the potato crop. So what we did this year is we delayed the planting of the green manure this year so we can kill the potatoes first, and then we'll terminate the green manure crop. That way the insects will stay over here and just stay nice and happy, and they don't go bug the, the potato crop. Um, what we'll be doing here, probably in about a week, we'll start to terminate this crop. We'll go through with a... Well, actually, what we're going to do first is we're going to spread our compost on top of this green manure crop. Um, we're doing, on this circle here, we're doing one ton of compost, and then we're mixing in a fish product too. And we're going to spread that right on top of the green manure while it's standing. We're going to go through with a flail beater, chop up the residue a little bit, then we'll go and incorporate that. We really like having the compost spread out here on top of the green manure. I think there's just a real synergistic effect when you have that green manure being digested out in the field and you have these other components out there at the same time. I think they really complement each other and work very well together. So the compost is our, our main fertility going into next year for the potato crop. So going into the spring next year, we're going to have everything out here and ready to go for that potato crop. Um, as far as what we have in the mix this year, I got my cheat sheet here. Uh, I got spring forage peas, lentils, um, sordan 79, pearl millet, oats, nitro radish, uh, purple top turnip, Ethiopian cabbage, buckwheat, and safflower. Um, last year we had a seven-way mix. Um, we had a lot of the same things in there. We had common vetch out here last year. It didn't do real well. It just seemed to get consumed by everything else out there. So we eliminated the common vetch from the mix this year. But what we did is we put lentils in its place. So we still replaced it with another legume out there. Um, the safflower, the pearl millet, and the Ethiopian cabbage are three other things we added to the mix this year too, just to get some more diversity out there. So. Uh, if you guys want, you're more than welcome to go out here and find whatever you can, try to identify all the species you can. Then after that, um, we've got another project going on on the other circle. The reason we pulled out here in between them is we're actually working with some companion cropping in, in our potatoes. What you'll see out there is we planted 10 pounds per acre of peas right along with our potatoes. We had a potato planter designed specifically for planting the legume crop right at the time that we're planting the potatoes. So the peas were planted at the same seed depth as the potato seed piece, and the peas were able to come up from that depth. Um, the reason we planted them so deep is we mechanically control our weeds, so we wanted to be able to go through the rod weeder and cultivator before the peas emerged. So we did that right after that. The peas shot up right along the same time as the potatoes, and they've been coming right along. Um, the, reason for doing this is several fold but first of all peas are a legume so they're going to be adding nitrogen to the soil so it's just another free source of nitrogen a lot of the same concepts that we're trying to do with the multi-species here is just getting some diversity out in the soil just instead of having a monoculture of potatoes over there now we have some different roots in the soil feeding different components of, of the biology in the soil and also the other thing i liked about the peas is just it's another flowering crop so it's attracting predatory insects to the to the crop as well. Um, I did play around with some chickling vetch out there as well. It did really well. I didn't do a whole lot of it because I'd never tried it before, so I didn't want to do the whole farm and then find out that it wasn't going to work. It was very successful. I kind of liked it even better than the peas. Next year, what I see us doing is a kind of a 50-50 mix of peas and chickling vetch. Um, about 10 pounds per acre I felt like is a really good population out there, so that'll be excellent. It's going to be exciting to see what happens at harvest time and then just Years down the road, as we accumulate that nitrogen, I think we're going to be able to decrease our inputs further as, as we go down the road each time. Um, another thing that was kind of interesting about the potato crop this year is I mentioned the buckwheat had started to go to seed last year before we incorporated. We actually got a fair amount of volunteer buckwheat coming up in the potato crop this year. Um, it flowered really early. Anytime you went out there, the buckwheat flower was just swarming with insects. So I kind of like that. So I'm kind of tempted to add some buckwheat in with my legumes next year and see if I can't get some of them to come up along with the companion crop. So the potential is we could have a 10 species mix on this side of the road. You go across the field, we'll have the potatoes plus three or four more species. So, in, you know, when we look back how we used to farm, we used to have just a two species rotation. That's all we add out here. 
now we're getting up to 14, 15 different species out here. And I think we just have potential to solve so many more problems by doing this and just getting the diversity out there. So we're growing this many different species all to grow one potato crop. It seems kind of extreme, but I think we're kind of just scratching at the surface here. Chicken veggie in the United States. One of the interesting things about that plant is that every plant, the, the roots will exude a, a chemical signature, and each each plant has different uh, chemicals that the roots leak out, and uh, each one of those uh, different chemicals will stimulate a different phase of the soil biology. And Chickling Vetch, uh, and I can't remember the number, I need to look it up again, but but he said that Chickling Vetch will exude a, a wider array of, of these different uh, root exudates than any other crop that they've really